So here we are, the only first episode of Communist Radio. Yes. Uh, we're going to make these weekly episodes. We'll see how often we can get us together in the room. I know you've got a lot coming up. We'll come on to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But look, let's start with, I know you've been following the news this week. Let's start with what Starmer has been saying and doing in the in the media this week. Yes, Keir Starmer. So this week, the main headlines have been him talking about how they're ready to be an unpopular government. We're going to take the tough decisions and we don't mind being unpopular. That's and lucky because they are already, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah, that was my first response. I thought, okay, we already know that. But actually on a serious, deeper level, it shows the scale of the cuts and austerity that is going to be coming our way. It's actually quite rare, in well, in some ways, definitely in, in elections and so on, for a planning incoming party or government to be honest about the sort of austerity and the cuts that they're going to make. But actually, even in the election, Starmer had to brace the population, yeah. the public, for a bit of this. And then, yeah, after the first couple of months, he's come out and just said, yeah, we're going to be unpopular and we're going to have to make these tough decisions. And he's saying, oh, this is because of this massive 20 billion black hole that they've just discovered in the finances. Yeah, but, I mean, no one believes that. Yeah, which was already disproven multiple times. Um, but what I think is interesting about it is this narrative, this playbook is actually the same thing that David Cameron did mm -hmm. when he first became prime minister. Um, and when the Gordon Brown and that, that, that kind of coalition was, was um, defeated, when David Cameron came in, everything he was saying was all about the, the mess that the Labour government had left the country in and the economy was in a terrible way and that now we are going to have to make these really tough decisions. Yeah, yeah. I, mem I remember this well. I remember it was when I was at university that all this stuff was coming through. Yeah. And this is, that was the exact argument. Big mess. Look at what the last government's done. And now we have to make cuts and mm -hmm. we'll be the responsible ones. They said it would last five years. It lasted 14 years. It lasted 14 years and it killed, um, there are reports that show nearly 100,000 people, or I think in excess actually of 100,000 people, have died as a direct result of austerity. Mm. And so what should we take from Starmer saying we're going to be unpopular? It means actually their austerity is going to be worse. Yeah. Um, and people are furious about this because obviously they've run an election on the basis of change, of absolute disgust towards the Tories. Um, and now people are realizing very, very, very quickly that actually they're going to have not just more of the same, but perhaps even a worsening yeah. living standards and conditions. And this will be quite interesting to see the impact that this has on, for example, the trade union leaders. Yeah. These guys are supposed to represent working class people who uh, have been having a really rough time of it the last 14 years or so. And lit as we're recording this right now, the TUC Congress is meeting. They're yeah. having their conference where this question is on the agenda in one form or another. Mm -hmm. And it will be quite interesting to see what what they come out with and how it's discussed. I mean, obviously, the, government, the Labour government has already said that it's going to do a couple of things like repeal some anti-trade union legislation they've given a pay rise to some public sector workers what do we what do we think of that what do you make of that well this question of you know the unions and their relationship with labor how should they you know treat the labor government treat Keir Starmer is I think the massive elephant in the room actually of the whole TUC um, because everything that Starmer has promised and the labor government is going to do is nowhere near enough to match the gulf in, in what inflation has done to people's wages and living standards. Um, and in a whole number of sectors, we know that workers are still gearing up for more strike action, um, despite these kind of piecemeal reforms that, that Starmer and the Labour government are, are offering. Um, so I think as much as the union leaders are trying to work with the Labour government, because that's how things are supposed to go very, very quickly, they're going to face the reality of what their members need and want, um, which will be more of direct confrontation, not just with the bosses, but ultimately the Labour government. Yeah, I think I think the reason that Starmer's done it, that he's repealing the anti-union legislation and the and offering this pay rise to some of the public sector workers, is to basically buy off the union leaders. He says, look, we'll do this so that you are inside the tent, basically, to the union leaders, so that as people get angry, like you were saying it'll be on the union leaders to try and diffuse the situation and hold back 
that anger that is about to come to the surface. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's what's needed is a kind of coordinated fight back rather than a rather than trying to pacify workers on behalf of the Labour government. That's not what the union leaders need to do. And they keep trying to, they're trying to play off different sectors against each other um, in the media. That's how they presented um, the, the offers to certain unions, yeah, like the doctors. Um, you know, why should doctors get this pay rise when other people won't? And that's also the way they're framing the winter fuel allowance um, cut that is coming up. It's also, it's everything to do with the lab, Labour government's budget is about which section of the population or the working class are you making life a bit better for? Oh, you're going to attack the pensioners? Or what about the children? Don't they deserve free school meals? Oh, you're giving the doctors a bit of money and how's that going to fit? And that is just the epitome or a summation of, of capitalism um, and the artificial scarcity of capitalism and the artificial scarcity and the resultant austerity that this Labour government is, is, is forced to base itself on, which is to just chip things here and there and try and move things around. But ultimately, the, the living standards, the conditions of the working class as a whole are under attack. And this Labour government is going to make things worse, even if they momentarily bump things for a few people here and there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But this, and I think this is going to, I mean, people are already angry. You talk to people now about the state of the world, about the state of society, and they are angry. I think that anger is going to become more widespread and it's going to get deeper and it's going to find some quite explosive and dramatic expressions. I mean, we're seeing this right now around the world, to be honest. Yeah. It, it's like the defining feature of the world, especially amongst young people, is complete anger at... <laughs> to say the government feels superficial, it's just like the status quo, yes, it's, it's the establishment, it's the system. Yeah, that's it. I mean, well, obviously, you know, we all know that you've been uh, quite closely following and involved in some of the events in Bangladesh lately. That's the best example of this in, in the recent period, no? It is, yeah, exactly. I mean, what has just happened in Bangladesh, they're calling it the, a Gen Z revolution. That is amazing. Um, the students in Bangladesh, yeah, they led a, a revolution, a complete revolution, and, and the um, Hasina, the prime minister, was forced to flee. Mm. There's an interim government now. We've made our, our points, our criticisms, our analysis of that that people can check out on, on the website. But what did that show? It showed the, the power of the masses when they come together on a mass scale and in a collective way. But it's very significant the role that students played in it and young people because the anger they felt, of course there were some particularities there, the quota system and so on and so forth, but it's this idea about the future, I think. Like what kind of future do I have that is being offered to me by the current state of things? And whether you're in Bangladesh or another country, young people feel the same thing. That's why we've seen huge movements of the youth also in places like Kenya. Um, and Nigeria and all over Indonesia, everywhere, what you are finding is young people who are being forced into action, not because of some abstract, purer morality than, than older people, but because the world around them, their conditions are pushing them into action. And that is historically how revolutions have always taken place. Um, Revolutions are the product of, of the conditions that people find themselves in and the way in which people are squeezed and squeezed and squeezed until they, they spring back like a spring, right? Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, you're seeing a lot also. One of the things that seems to be radicalizing people the most now is, is Palestine. And that has been the case for the last year or so. And that, I think, is going to continue to be the case because things are just dragging on there. I, I mean, there was a protest... The week, this weekend just gone, actually, this Saturday just gone. And it was huge. This protest was was big. I mean, obviously, a lot of them have been big, but what is incredible is that we are 11 months in and the protests remain of a significant, mm. over 100,000 people I don't think were there. I don't think I've seen something of that kind that's like gone on for so long. And that is really powerful um, for different reasons. On the one hand, uh, it shows also how... 
kind of superficial and this, you know, when David Lammy made this announcement that they're going to suspend 30 out of 350 arms licenses um, to Israel, how it hasn't even made a blip. It hasn't meant anything to the Palestine movement, also to the Zionists. And yeah, the, you yeah. know, he's just managed to upset everybody. He's, he's pissed everyone off. Um, but also that, you know, what people are fighting for on these protests is not, they're not fooled basically by superficial comments mm. or, or suggestions here and there, like 30 arm sales being suspended. But there's a real revolutionary mood on those demonstrations yeah. and you feel it every time you're there. There is only one solution, Intifada revolution. Yeah. I hear that constantly. I think it's got more radical also as the last 11 months has gone on. Yeah. The kind of slogans that you're hearing on those things. And I think it probably will get more radical still because when you look at the Middle East now, the situation is, it's going to get worse. I mean, it's going to get worse for the Palestinians. It's going to get worse across the entire region. The way Netanyahu's going on to cling on to power, he obviously wants to extend the war. The US is going to back him. And then you've got, I mean, the, Iran is going to get very upset by They'll that. back him, but they'll complain about it. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll say, <laughs> no. oh, no, well, we wish we didn't have to do this. Yeah. We wish you would kill slightly fewer people. Yeah. No, but they'll back him, and, and uh, Iran isn't going to stand for that. If the, war, if the war widens, the Iranians will get involved. The Russians are talking to the Iranians. The Chinese are taking a harder stance with that against Israel at the minute. It's this whole powder keg is building up and up and up. It's driven. It's it's, made, it's driven by by the U.S. They're the ones shipping loads of weapons there. They're the ones sending their aircraft carriers into the region. They are, whilst as you said, like we are whilst crying about it, they are escalating the whole thing. Mm -hmm. These people are these these imperialists, these capitalists. They are willing to risk. They're playing with fire. Like they're willing to risk hundreds of thousands, millions of people's lives and livelihoods and homes. Stuff. Just just to assert their imperialist dominance in that region. And the problem is, in Britain, there is no room for distracting people um, like they might have been able to do in the past um, through bettering people's condition or whatever it is, right? The problem that the, the British ruling class, the British government is faced with specifically in regards to why are young people so passionate um, and so drawn to the Palestine movement um, there's the basic human morality that people feel horrified at the, you know, you can't even describe the pictures and the videos that we see um, coming out of Gaza every single day. There's that. But on a deeper level, that is happening whilst Keir Starmer is coming out and saying, we're ready to be an unpopular government. Yeah, um, yeah 10 million pensioners are just not going to be able to, you know, you know, uh, heat their homes. This. It's all of that together. Oh, also, we need to give three billion pounds a year to Ukraine and, and forever until that is necessary. Um, but no, sorry, you know, we've got to make smart decisions and the two child benefit cap has to remain. In place. It's all of that together with the universities. If you're a student, your university cutting, you know, um, uh, certain yeah, for, courses. Look, 40 or whatever of it universities is. are running a budget deficit this year. It's it's too much all at once um plus people's own immediate personal you know probably conditions living yeah. standards deteriorating so i mean ima imagine take a step back imagine you're approaching this completely fresh you're an alien from another planet you turn out and you see that you yeah. see all this death and destruction this horror without end in the middle east and and, and with your money your taxpayers money whilst universities schools hospitals um are all falling to pieces you would, you'd look at that and think this is insanity this it's is barbarism madness. it is barbarism that's what it is it's barbarism and what is evident because this has gone on for a long time on the palestine demos and in general is people are more and more and more connecting all of this together and seeing the role of the media in in you know because this is the other thing people are really angry about the reporting um about palestine in the mainstream media like why is it so biased and the obvious question is if they will lie so much for an, a different country for israel if they will be so biased in their reporting what are they willing to lie about here yeah, right. in this country where their so-called more immediate interests are being threatened that is the question people are forced to ask themselves when they watch this and so they have created um you know or they have sown the seeds of their own destruction i think that's it and th th this is something that we're that the, the revolutionary communist party and and you in particular are trying to bring out a bit 
because you're about to go on this tour around universities. You've been invited yes. to speak at a whole number of universities on, on this question, on the state of imperialism at the moment, the situation in the Middle East. It's, it's under the banner of like books, not bombs. Yeah. So where are you going on your on this tour? I am going to Edinburgh. I'm starting in Edinburgh. Uh, that's next week, right? That's this week. That's this week. Oh that's yeah, that's week. like two days. I'm ago. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm going to Edinburgh, Leeds, Sheffield, uh, Cambridge, Oxford. I've missed out some places. Yeah. London. I don't know, I'm going to a whole bunch of different places um, and hopefully more as well on over the course of, of September, but also mainly October. Well, I saw you posted it on your social media and then I, I saw did. someone wrote in from a uni that we hadn't planned yes. to visit saying, oh, look, I can, I can arrange something at this university as well. Yeah. Um, and look, we are going um, to spread our message to say we're trying to build an anti-imperialist, also anti-militarist campaign, mm. because that's also what this is about. And this isn't just Britain. I mean, as an international, we're running this campaign as a whole as well, because globally, um, especially in Western countries, Western governments are rushing to increase their defense expenditure. Um, and, you know, if you look at the profits that arms manufacturers have made over the last couple of years, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we're running this campaign, books, not bombs, healthcare, not warfare, the slogans that we used in the recent election campaign, because it connects with the mood. Yeah, in that, that election exists, campaign, they went down so well, those slogans. Some it connects the with the doors. mood and... And it gets to the heart of, of the problem. Why are you investing in a genocide? Why are you investing in bombs over the education of, um, of students in, in, in this country? Um, and so what I'm hoping, yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, it brings, the point is, like, why are you doing this? It, it brings out, that is the essential question. It brings out yeah. the contradictions in the capitalist system. That's the point. These aren't exactly. just, Ideology. this isn't just Keir Starmer on a mad one. This is yeah. the, the logical conclusion of, of the capitalist system and its contradictions. That's, I think, I know that's what a lot of the branches, a lot of the university groups uh, that, that the RCP has got, that's what they're going to be discussing in the next period, the link between militarism and imperialism and capitalism as a system. Yeah. And in the process, exposing that um, and exposing how, you know, this is a government of war at the end of the day. Um, and it doesn't matter who the individual is or whatever it is. If you defend the capitalist system, you will end up having to defend war or not just defend it, rather promote it. That's the point. These people are warmongers um, because it flows from the needs of capitalism. Um, and so that's what this campaign is going to be about. And we're hoping to meet as many students as possible, um, not just to come along and, and meet us, but ultimately to join us, to join the Revolution Communist Party and help us build not just this campaign, but a party that can really bring all of these different movements, these different campaigns together. We can see the link between austerity um, and war um, and attacks on the working class and you know not supporting the unions and all of this kind of stuff. We want to build communist fighters in as many different workplaces, as many different universities, as many different schools as possible to fight for these things and expose them when they're taking place. Yeah, and that could, because that is the main thing that's lacking, isn't it? Like, There's a lot of very dedicated people, tons of people showing out to demos and lots of people get involved in other bits and pieces of campaigning work, including many members of the RCP. The point is, can we bring all of that together and direct all those movements at the root cause of all of this stuff, which is the capitalist system? And right now, there isn't really anyone else doing that, like trying to bring that together. The RCP isn't big enough on its own, but that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're, we're trying to make it big enough to bring all those things together and and direct it against capitalism itself. So that's what I mean. Your there's your tour, but the RCP is uh, there's plenty of other places where you're not going, where the RCP is going to be at universities, on campuses, outside colleges, in workplaces, in neighbourhoods, yeah, with stores. Like as we speak right now, up in Edinburgh. The, it is the freshers' fair right now, so the comrades are there with the stalls inside, outside, whatever. And you'll go up uh, later this week to to speak to the students there. But that's coming up. I think Bristol was also this week, and then and then it really starts to pick up next week. And there's going to be like the freshers' fair. So that's the main. That if you are a student, if you're going to university, or maybe you're already there, you're second year, whatever, come and find us. It's, it'll be the Marxist site, or the Communist Society, or just the RCP stall. They're called different things in different places. 
but come and come and talk to us and find out about yeah our books not bombs campaign but also this is a uh we're on a recruitment drive the rcp uh i think we've got i think we've got good ideas i think we've got interesting and important things to say but we are not big enough so we need more people to Exactly. to get stuck in so this is a perfect time to come and chat to us yeah and it's all culminating um the peak of this campaign and, and the freshest period will be our massive revolution festival mm. um which is in the middle of june i think it's the 15th 14th something like that you mean You'll november find out. not june i mean november not june <laughs> i don't know why that happened <laughs> um in november we'll have the revolution festival um which is going to have a series of really incredible talks on imperialism um how imperialism works what does imperialism look like today what is british imperialism specifically but also beyond that the fundamentals of marxism um looking at previous revolutionary movements um how they've happened and what are the lessons we can draw from this yeah that's it it's, it's an anti-imperialist conference and a, and a school of communism that's yeah. the idea isn't it exactly i think there's gonna be a lot of international visitors also so it'll be a good chance to meet communists from all over the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that'll be that'll really be the pinnacle of, of the whole thing um and yeah between now and then there'll be meetings there'll be demonstrations on campuses uh there'll be there'll be all sorts i know some of the comrades are planning campaigns around kicking army recruiters off campus absolutely uh around uh, which is outrageous i know that look... that happens yeah army recruiters on campus recruiting for what for war yeah for imperialism well we're recruiting for communism yeah that's it join us that's the way <laughs> that's the way and yeah i know i think in ucl they're thinking about uh, in london they're thinking about a campaign the Centre for Ethics in UCL is part funded by BAE Systems, the aerospace, aerospace uh, company. Imagine that Centre of Ethics <laughs> funded by that. There's all kinds of things like that going on locally in different places that people can get involved in. Yeah, as I say, meetings, rallies, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but then, it, it, yeah, it is all culminating in in the Revolution Festival. Yes. So that'll be a, an important thing to get your tickets for if uh, you haven't already. Yes. But with that, uh, I mean, there's a lot for us to be getting on with, a lot for you to be getting on with, going Indeed. to Edinburgh tomorrow. So uh, we will, I think, leave it there. The main thing is, it, like, if you want to read more about some of the political stuff we've been talking about, it's all in this uh, current issue of the Communist newspaper, mm -hmm. which you can subscribe to. And you should also yeah, make a beeline for any RCP stalls that you see in your neighborhoods or your workplaces or your schools or universities or whatever. But you can also just get in touch online uh, and join or apply to join that way. And if you do that, what we'll do is like, someone will be in touch. They'll give you a call and we'll come and uh, you know, have a coffee, meet up, whatever, have a drink. And they'll tell you what it is to be involved with the branch of the RCP. And you can you can come along if, if it sounds like the kind of thing you want to be involved in. So uh, do that. Subscribe to the paper, join, and um, hopefully we'll see you again soon.